Good morning everyone. How are you all doing today? You're doing well? Everyone happy? Did you eat well this morning? You didn't eat this morning all fasting or what? Fasting is it? For some of you fasting, for some of you feasting is it? I'm so happy to be here this morning. I want to extend my heartfelt thanks to the president of uh, Gilgal Gospel Mission, Reverend Sunil Singh. Praise the Lord, brother. It's such a joy to see you. And I want to thank uh, Dr. Maria Majorn for your kind words, the principal of the college. Thank you, madam. Thank you. And all the esteemed uh, guests and uh, the staff, the teachers, the students, and of course, the graduating students. So. Thank you for the wonderful songs you presented and the great music. May God bless you all. Anybody feeling tensed? No? So stay cool, stay relaxed, okay? Today we're going to have some time with the Word of God. The Bible says the Word of God is food, it's food for the soul. The Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. மனுஷன் அப்பத்து நாள் மாத்திரம் அல்ல தேவனுடைய வாயிலிருந்து புறப்படும் ஒவ்வொரு வார்த்தையினாலும் பிழைப்பான் என்று வாசிக்கிறேன் அதனால பெரிய விருந்து உங்களுக்கு இருக்கு இன்னைக்கு என்ன அதனால சந்தோஷமா அதை ஏற்றுக்கொள்ளுங்க ஐ ப்ரே தட் த ஹோலி ஸ்பிரிட் வில் கைடஸ் இன் டு ஆல் ட்ரூத் திஸ் மார்னிங் ஸோ கீப் யுவர் ஹார்ட்ஸ் ஓப்பன் ஐஸ் ஓப்பன் இயர்ஸ் ஓப்பன் அண்ட் இஃப் யூ கேன் டேக் சம் நோட்ஸ் இட் வில் பி குட் பிகாஸ் ஐ நோ இட் வில் பி அ பிளஸிங் டு யூ Kindly turn your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 19, please. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 19. Matthew 4 and verse 19. Then Jesus said to them, Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. என்னை பின்பற்றி வாருங்கள் உங்களை மனுஷரை பிடிக்கிறவர்களாக மாற்றுவேன் தமிழில் அது சரியாக சொல்லணும்னா மனுஷனை பிடிக்கிற மீனவர்களாய் மாற்றுவேன் இனோ இஃப் யூ ரீட் த பைபிள் வெரி க்ளோஸ்லி அண்ட் இன்டென்ட்லி யூ வில் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் தட் தேர் ஆர் மெனி டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் ஃபார் அ சர்வெண்ட் ஆஃப் காட் மெனி டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் அநேக விதங்களில் வேதம் கத்துடைய ஊழியத்தை செய்கிறவங்களை வர்ணிக்கிறது லெட் பி கிவ் யூ அ ஃபியூ எக்ஸாம்பிள்ஸ் ஸோ யூ கேன் நோட் இட் டவுன் யூ கேன் ரீட் தம் லேட்டர் இஃப் யூ கம் டு ஃபர்ஸ்ட் பீட்டர் சாப்டர் ஃபைவ் அண்ட் வர்ஸ் டூ யூ அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் தட் அ சர்வெண்ட் ஆஃப் காட் இஸ் கால்ட் அஸ் அ ஷெப்பர்ட் ஒரு ஆட்டை மேய்க்கிற ஒரு மெய்ப்பனுக்கு இணையாக ஒரு தேவனுடைய ஊழியனை ஒப்பிட்டு இருக்கிறத பார்க்கலாம் இட்ஸ் எஸ் ஷெப்பர்ட் த ஃப்ளாக் ஆஃப் காட் which is among you serving as overseers not by compulsion but willingly not for dishonest gain but eagerly or a devanude ulian is a man of god is compared to a shepherd number 1 number 2 if you come to second timothy chapter 2 and verse 3 second timothy chapter 2 and verse 3 when you read there you find that a servant of god is also compared to a soldier Apostle Paul writing to a young pastor, namely Timothy, he says, You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So here you see the image of a soldier. What was the first one? I will ask you questions. So first one is what? Shepherd. Very good. Number two? Soldier. Very nice. Third one, if you come to Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17. Hebrews 13 and verse 17. It says like this, it says, Obey those who have rule over you and be submissive for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. It says that. The third picture you read here is a servant of God is pictured as a security guard. They watch over your souls. 
கண்காணியாக பாருங்க உங்கள் நடத்துகிறவர்கள் உங்களை ஆத்தமல் உத்தரவாதம் பண்ணுகிறவர்களாய் விழித்திருக்கிறவர்களானபடியாக ஒரு காவலாளிக்கு ஒப்பிடப்பட்டிருக்கிறது சோல்ஜர் செக்யூரிட்டி கார்டு எவ்ரி ஒன் மஸ்ட் ரிப்பீட் ஆஃப்டர் மீ ஓகே ஐம் ஐம் பார்ட்லி அ டீச்சர் ஆஸ் வெல் ஸோ ஐ வாண்ட் யூ டு ரிப்பீட் ஆஃப்டர் மீ ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஒன் இஸ் ஷெப்பர்ட் சோல்ஜர் யா செக்யூரிட்டி கார்டு என் ஐ கெட் வித் த லிஸ்ட் கெட் த்ரூ வித் த லிஸ்ட் ஐ லாஸ்ட் ஒன் ஆஃப் யூ டு கம் அண்ட் ஸ்டாண்ட் அப் அண்ட் டெல் மீ ஆல் ஆல் தோஸ் திங்ஸ் ஓகே ஸோ பி வெரி காஷியஸ் ஆ ஆல் ரைட் ஸோ த நெக்ஸ்ட் ஒன் இஸ் இஃப் யூ கம் டு ஹீப்ரூஸ் சாப்டர் த்ரீ அண்ட் வேர்ஸ் ஃபைவ் Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 5 Hebrews 5 3 5 vasta it says was Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a servant as a servant for a testimony of those things which will be spoken afterward tamil la solanum na sollapada pogura kaaryangalukku saatchiyaga mose pani vidai karanai avrudeya veetil engum unme ullavana irundha the minister of god is also compared to a servant servant what are the four things now number 1 shepherd soldier security guard servant very nice okay we'll go one more james chapter 3 and verse 1 james chapter 3 and verse 1 my brethren let not many of you become teachers teachers knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment again you see an image given for a minister of god what is that very nice teacher or a tutor that's the calling devan namai upadesham pannugira varala alladhu podagaraga andra namai alaikira okay can we do one more okay turn with me now to first corinthians chapter 3 and verse 10 first corinthians chapter 3 and verse 10 there it says apostle paul says according to the grace of god which was given to me as a as a wise master builder i have laid the foundation and none of the builds on it let each one take heed how he builds on it what do you see here what's the image what's the image let me read again i want you to bring up something okay according to the grace of god which was given to me as a wise master builder what is the image as a builder builder of a building that's the next one okay so let's go again number one is what shepherd soldier security guard servant teacher builder very nice let's go one more first corinthians chapter 3 and verse 6 first corinthians chapter 3 and verse 6 i planted apollos watered but god gave the increase nan natte napolo neer paichana devane velaiya cheda what is the image here yes very nice gardener is a gardener imagine this as minister of god is also pictured as someone who takes care of a garden sowing watering reaping all right you can even call him as a farmer so there's lot of work that we have to do okay and then let's go one more the same verse that we read now matthew chapter 4 was 19 and jesus said to them follow me and i will make you fishers of men what's the image here tell me now a fisher of men fisher of men it's not a fisher man but a fisher of men in fact there's a little connection to fishing as well but i want you to think about all these thoughts now come on tell me those all the things that we saw number one is what a shepherd a soldier a security guard a servant a teacher very nice then very good then fisher of men okay all these images if i want to deal with all the images that are presented here it will take an eight day class okay so i'm not going to touch on all of this but i gave this list so you can understand the responsibility on your shoulder ungal mel irukka uttaravatha purindukolanu nu solidha idella na sonna so we are not uh, serving the lord we are not ministers in the gospel 
to have a good time. We have a huge responsibility on our shoulders. We have a task to complete. There's a work to do. And someday we'll be asked an account of what we did and what we do. So this is a responsible calling. That's what I want to bring to your notice this morning. And I want to just stay with the, the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 19. He said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Fishers of men. To be called by God is a glorious thing. Please understand that. To just be called by God is a glorious thing. Why do I say that? Come with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 through 29. If you have your Bibles, please open those Bibles. I don't think I have to ask for Bibles in a Bible college, right? Yeah? So, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 26 onwards. Just consider your calling. Not many wise people are called. Not many noble are called. Not many strong are called. Not many smart are called. Alaika Patavagal Roman Yanigal Gadayade, Peri Aisir Bangal Padichongan Gadayade, Peri Theramai Saligalan Gadayade. God has chosen the foolish things of the world, the base things of the world, to express His glory and take His message to the whole world. Ulaga Murubadayam. If you look at this passage in Matthew chapter 4, you would be interesting to find that the first candidates got picked out to take his gospel to the entire world were not educated graduates, but fishermen who lived by the trade of their hands, who had no schooling, who had no education. In fact, in the later days, People told them, who are these people, uneducated, who have no schooling. Even Jesus never went to school. That's interesting. They were like, depending on what they get every day, over But he used these people and transformed them into changing the entire world. Apostle Paul says, consider your calling. Consider your calling. You are called by the Lord. I just want to dwell with this one verse. I want to dissect it into three parts. And I want you to understand the depth of what this verse is talking about. The first thing that this verse talks about is this. It talks about our purpose. Everyone repeat after me. What is that? Purpose. Where do you find that? Look at that verse again. Come with me to again to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 19. And he said to them, follow me and I will make you what? Fishers of men. That's your purpose. What is your purpose as you finish Bible college? What is your purpose as a minister of God? Not to show off with your degree and say I finished a BTH or BD or whatever. Not to show that I am so educated, so qualified, I, have, I know this, I know that. Not to show that. The purpose of your calling is this, that you will be a fisher of men. When you don't have a purpose for your life, you cannot accomplish anything. Many years ago, Albert Einstein, one of the famous physicists of our time, he got into a train in Germany. He just finished a long day of conferences. He was very tired. Got into a train and dozed off to sleep in a few minutes. 
ஒரு ட்ரெயினில் ஏறுறாரு அப்படி உட்காடுறாரு அயல்பட் ஐன்ஸ்டைன் ரொம்ப களைப்பா அப்படி உட்காந்து கொஞ்ச நேரத்தில் தூங்கிடுறாரு ஆஃப்டர் ஃபியூ மினிட்ஸ் ஹி ஃபீல் சம்படி டேப்பிங் ஆன் இஸ் ஷோல்டர் தோல்ல யார் தட்டுறது ஹூ இஸ் டேப்பிங் அப்படின்னு சொல்லி திரும்பி பார்த்தா இட்ஸ் அ டிக்கெட் கலெக்டர் சார் கேர் கேன் ஐ ஹாவ் யூர் டிக்கெட் அல்பர்ட் ஐன்ஸ்டைன் சர்ச்சஸ் இஸ் பாக்கெட் அண்ட் டூ இஸ் ஷாக் ஹி ஃபைண்ட்ஸ் அ டிக்கெட் இஸ் மிஸ்ஸிங் இட்ஸ் வெரி டெரிஃபைட் he doesn't know where the ticket is he gets up searches his pants the ticket is not there and then he starts checking his ba- bags and checking it the ticket is not there as he was frantically ch- searching everything the ticket collector suddenly realized who this man is he is a man who got a nobel prize for physics he realized that he's a great man realized that and said sir 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 i know who you are i know who you are you would have been busy you would have missed your ticket somewhere don't bother about getting your ticket just tell me where you're going i'll write a fresh ticket for you but albert einstein would have none of that he would not listen to what this man is saying he keeps on searching his bags and rummaging through his books and everything this ticket collector keeps waiting for a few moments and then he interjects again and says sir don't worry you are a busy man you would have missed the ticket somewhere just tell me where you are going i will write a fresh ticket for you when he said this a second time albert einstein gave a sharp look at the ticket collector and said you know what only if i see my ticket i'll know where i am going only if i see my ticket i'll know where i am going ticket pata da enga poren enake theriyum adukka da ticket thedi irukken now do you think 100 ticket collectors can help this man yeah the same comes thing comes to you where are you going where are you going where are you going with your degree what are you going to do with your degree what are you going to do with all your training and teaching and all this preparation enna seiy poringa no ka edad iruka நோக்கம் இருக்கா பயந்துராதீங்க நோக்கத்தை நாம கொடுக்க வேண்டியதில்லை நோக்கத்தை கத்தரே கொடுப்ப த பேசேஜ் ஸோ பியூட்டிஃபுல்லி சேஸ் யூ அண்ட் ஐ டோன்ட் ஹாவ் டு ஃபிக்ஸ் அ பர்பஸ் ஃபார் அவர் லைஃப் தட்ஸ் த ஒர்க் ஆஃப் ஜீசஸ் ஹி சேஸ் ஐ ஹாவ் ஆல்ரெடி ட்ரான் அ பர்பஸ் ஃபார் யுவர் லைஃப் please understand that i have drawn a purpose for your life there are so many people don't realize this we are all busy trying to write the purpose of our own lives you understand what i'm saying when i was very young i still remember i got the call of god for ministry when i was 8th standard 13 years old i didn't have lot of knowledge of anything but i felt this tingling in my heart that i have to serve the lord i mean it got tingling 13 vayasile aandar kooliye seiyano nu oru oru nalla oru nadathudal irundathu good leading was there but um, you you understand like a teenager 13 year old you know how excited we are and you know what i did i took my diary and i wrote these few words i said lord I want to be like Billy Graham and I want to evangelize the world. Number 2. I want to be like Reinhard Bonke and uh, see miracles happening in my life and through me. 3. I want to be like Don Moen and I want to lead worship. I want to be like John Stott who was a great theologian. I want to be like Spurgeon who was a great preacher. I want to be like Charles Finney who would write amazing songs. I want to be like D.L. Moody who brought world revival. if you look at the list all of those people were great people 
and in my little mind i thought i want to be like all of them i began to write or i began to paint the own picture of my life yan walke kana tittata nane vare aarambha but one day later i realized i don't have to bother with drawing the picture of my life because the one who gives purpose is not me the one who gives purpose to my life is god hallelujah the bible says as high as the heavens are above the earth so are my thoughts higher than yours vaanathirkku bhoomi evlo uyarama irukiradho avlo uyarama ennude ennangal ungalai kurithu irukku nu solrar aandu ungalku na romba anba solren aandru ungala oru nokkathoda dhaan alikkira god calls you with a purpose please understand that my dear friends whether you are graduates or your students whoever you are please understand that there's a calling there's a purpose upon your life your purpose is not just getting a degree or a graduation or just a certificate or just be accredited by somebody no 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 that's not your purpose that could be a tool but it's not a purpose the purpose is very clear you are called to be a fisher of men if you are not fulfilling that purpose and if you are not catching fish if you are not bringing people to the lord your degrees are good enough as a piece of paper please understand that whether you are a pastor whether you are a teacher a student anybody who is serving the lord in any capacity our work doesn't get complete if we are not bringing souls to christ please understand that my job as a pastor doesn't get complete if i don't fulfill the purpose that i have to catch people fish people that is my purpose every other purpose is meaningless it's meaningless my sincere prayer for each and every one of you this morning is that god will light a fire in your heart so you'll not just go out as graduates but you will go out as fishers of men hallelujah if somebody looks at you and finds you somewhere 3 years down the line and says what are you doing what are you doing enna pandringa appdi ungala graduate paathu keta what will be your answer i'm sad to say please don't think that i'm offending any of you but i'm very sad to say there are so many so many graduates from bible schools who have just landed in a job who have just used the bible college degree to make a living they are no different than a fisherman who is catching fishes to take care of his family romba sad a solra nariya bible college padicha pillainga enna ma pandringa unga life vechu nu keta or edathila vela ik sendra sambala vaangren vaalka nadakku hello whoever you are the calling is very clear you are not called to watch fish you are not called to sell fish you are called to be a fisher of men i don't know how old you are today it can be in your 20s 30s 40s 50s i don't care i don't know how many years the lord is going to add to your life but as long as the lord is going to give you life please make sure that you are fulfilling that purpose you are fulfilling that purpose all these three years of training and you people who are sitting here as students the reason you are continuing in this college is not that you can get a nice government job back home just get a degree through no i want to make you fishers of men how many people do i bring to the lord 
am i casting my nets for the salvation of people aathu maruvadi seiya na uliya seirana romba mukkiyam i don't want to boast but my heart cry is this by the abundant grace of god god has given me a very large church thousands and thousands of people turn up every sunday at least 9000 in attendance every sunday and on the youtube and on social media every week around 25000 people watch our services but more than all of this trying to feed the people who are already fed my greatest passion is to go into the world and preach the gospel and by the grace of god i have been doing that faithfully for the past 25 years of my life even as a pastor with all these responsibilities almost every single day i go into schools morning from 9 o'clock and some days until evening 5 o'clock i preach the gospel and by the grace of god through that ministry many many youngsters have come to christ marandra dinga pa please don't forget this don't just get settled in a job don't use your accreditation and your degree to just make money and have a settled life that's not the calling of christ the purpose is very clear fishers of men repeat it my friends what is that everyone repeat it please what is that fisher of men fisher of men i studied in a bible college in kerala for two years i did my ma program ma in bible okay and right from that time god gave me this passion so evenings we had time for library and we had time to relax so from 4 pm to 6 pm by god's grace i would gather my friends cross over the friend fence and there would be rubber gardens everywhere there will be people working there in the evenings by the time they get their work done we would go there with our guitars and with our bibles make them sit down and preach the gospel you know why that is my purpose if i have not brought people to christ and i can have a hundred degrees behind my back it's of no use when i came inside i saw the tagline the theme of your college preaching christ and planting churches i think it sums it all up why am i getting a degree i have to preach christ and i have to save the lost never ever forget this purpose there is a purpose there's a purpose there's a purpose second timothy chapter 2 verse 3 to 4 rendu timothy rendu moonril endu nan you therefore must end your harsh hardship as a good soldier of jesus christ no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life so that he can please the one who enlisted him as a soldier don't get entangled in the affairs of this life but follow the one who called you with a purpose இந்த உலகத்தில் உள்ள பிரச்சனைகளில் போய் சிக்கிக்கொள்ளாதீங்க அழைத்த தேவனுடைய அழைப்பில் நிலைச்சிருங்க அப்போ நீங்கள் ஆசீர்வாதமாக இருப்பீங்க மேத்யூ சிக்ஸ் டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபோர் சேஸ் நோ மேன் கேன் சர்வ் டூ மாஸ்டர்ஸ் ஃபார் ஐதர் ஹி வில் ஹெய்ட் ஒன் அண்ட் லவ் தி அதர் ஹி வில் பி லாயல் டு ஒன் ஆர் டிஸ்பைஸ் தி அதர் யூ கேன் நாட் சர்வ் காட் அண்ட் money let me repeat that you cannot serve god and money please don't use your bible college degree 
to turn it into a money making business there's a calling it's not about how much money you made how much lands you bought how big buildings you built or how big organizations you were able to build no 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 it's about how many people you brought to christ how many people you were able to bring them to the saving knowledge of jesus christ don't serve money serve the lord and win souls for the sake of jesus let's go to that verse again let's read it again matthew 4 verse 19 follow me and i will make you fishers of men what did we think about the first one what is that very nice the purpose the purpose of the calling okay number 1 let's read that again it says follow me and i will make you fishers of men number 2 this verse not only talks about our purpose this verse also talks about our proximity to the one who called us our proximity the bible doesn't say in order to catch men go after men manushare pidikka manushara paathu ponga nu solla enna sonnaar namma sonnaar ennai pinbatti vaanga if you truly want to be an efficient servant of god an effective servant of god who will be able to fulfill this purpose that's the only way you can do it adha enna theriyuma follow jesus i don't know if you if you guys sing the song in this you know in your in your college but there used to be a song we used to sing where he leads me i will follow the family with that song i'll go with him all the way i'll go with him through the um valleys i'll go with him through the mountains i'll go with him all the way and there's other famous song i have decided to follow jesus no turning back no turning back when you follow somebody you are always in cl- close proximity with that person sometimes there are people who offer to help you to reach their house which you have which you have no clue where it is okay and they say i'll go in the bike in front of you you follow me in your car and sometimes these people are so excited to take you to their home that they run they they drive their vehicles very fast in one or two bends and you lo- get you get lost you don't know where they went right and then you have to call them again where are you my brother you are supposed to lead us where are you pastor we already reached home which home for them that house is familiar but for us it's new if i have to reach their house i have to follow them very closely i have to be connected with them i have to tailgate them otherwise i'm getting lost avangala pin thodrnde pona da avanga veetukku pesara mudiyum neenga aandavarukaga aathmaakala pidikanuma na unga anba solren not by might not by power but by his spirit without a close proximity with jesus you can never accomplish the goal of catching fishing people for jesus my dear friends i am not trying to underestimate your degree i am a degree holder as well but please don't put all your trust on your degree and your education and your knowledge of scriptures thinking that by knowing more about the bible you can save the lost no not possible not possible the bible says god uses the weak god uses the foolish to accomplish his purpose without a connection with christ 
you can never fulfill your purpose. I'm very sad to say, there are children who study in Bible schools, but have not been saved yet. But have never been forgiven of their sins. There are people who have no connection with Jesus whatsoever. There's no personal prayer life. There's no personal Bible reading. There's no personal meditation. There's no personal walking with the Lord. But they can go around and say, I am a graduate of Bible, Bible school. But they have no connection whatsoever with Jesus. It's true. Early days, when you go to some houses, there would be stickers everywhere. The sticker would be, did you read your Bible today? I think it's a great sticker to put up in all hostels, in all classrooms. We are all here reading about the Bible. But how many of us have re read our Bible today? I don't want you to put up your hands. But if I ask you this question, you are a Bible college student, you are a teacher of the Bible, you are training yourself to teach the word of God to everyone. Did you read your Bible since this morning? How many of you took time to be alone before the Lord this morning at least 10 minutes on your knees and ask the Lord for his grace and for his presence to guide you today. If I asked you, did you have your personal devotion with the Lord this morning? How many of us will say, yes, pastor, I walk with Jesus today. I heard the voice of Jesus today. I'm following his voice. I have a working relationship with him. How many of us can say that? I know my dear friends, Bible school students, I'm not trying to blame anyone. I know Bible school students who live in sins, who live in un unreconciled lives, who continue to live like a worldly person, but put on cloaks that they are nice Bible college students. We can achieve nothing with that. Jesus said, I know I'm taking you into the world to catch fish. I'm going to take you to become fishers of men. But don't follow men. Follow me. The danger in ministry is this. The people start following people and trying to please people, trying to fit in, and they lose the ministry. I encourage you this morning, if you want to be an efficient servant of God, effective servant of God, know your purpose. Don't swear away from that purpose. Don't sway away. Don't get diverted. Keep your call in your mind. I am here to bring people to the Lord. Purpose. Number two, I have to be in close proximity to Jesus. I have to follow him. Let's read that verse again. I don't have time much, but I'm going to finish this. Let me read that verse again. And then he said to them, Matthew 4, 19, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And I will make you fishers of men. First I said, we can see this verse fulfilled in our lives only when we know our purpose. Number two, when we are close proximity with Jesus. But there's one more thing that the Bible says. Yes, you have a purpose. Yes, you need to follow Jesus. But there's something in between. It says... I will make you fishers of men. What does it mean? Becoming a fisher of men 
is a process. Jesus did not say, you are already fishers of men. No. It's a process. Ungalai manusharai pedikkaravargal aakki neen solala aakku veen. And artho ondu, adho or thodarugira or anabu. You learn along the way. But the process doesn't stop. You keep on trying. You keep on working. You keep on striving. And the amazing thing is, God will make you do that. That's so amazing. God will make you do that. Jesus himself who called you will fulfill his purpose in your life. What more do we need? Ungalai alaitthava, unmai ullava, rappadiye seva. He who called you is faithful. He will accomplish it. He will do it. All we need to do is be available to him. Avarudaya vartheki nama yinangi nama yadang kudutthita podom. He will make anybody out of anybody. He will make somebody out of anybody. Neeeng ennoda work pannang andavari nama kekkunu. That is why you know Jesus said to his disciples after three and a half years of training which is like a Bible school. Three and a half years of teaching, training, practicals, everything. Jesus said now that you have heard and seen and experienced everything staying with me night and day for three and a half years. And Jesus said I am giving you a commission, the great commission. What is the great commission? Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Baptize everyone in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach them everything that I have taught you that they may abide in them. That's the commission, right? We know the commission. But God gave them the commission but then he said if you have to fulfill that commission he said tarry in Jerusalem, wait in Jerusalem until you are empowered with power from on high. Because after I go I will send you a comforter and he will teach you everything. He will guide you into all truth. He will empower you. I tell you, just because we know some stuff about Bible, don't just trust on that and just put your confidence on that. Every day, trust in the Lord. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, Acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. He will direct your paths. Un suya buti email saya amal, un mulu yirade todum katteril nambi ke ayirande, un vali gali lallam avare nenitu kuld, apoldu avar un nadei gali sevaya kuwa, ungalai vali nadatwa. God has to lead you into making a fisher of men. Only He can do it. Don't trust on yourself. Trust the Lord. Always be subject to Him. Whether you preach, you teach, you serve, you go and evangelize, always trust in the Lord. Because ultimately it is God who will do everything for me. Without Him I am nothing, right? What is the value of a purse without the money in it? What is the value of an envelope with it, without the check inside it? What is the value of a jewel box without the diamond inside it? Lea? Nagapati kulla irukkara vairam matta kaanam pichana nagapati kenna pravajanam salunga. Onnum illa lea? Life without Christ is meaningless. Without his power I can do nothing. I trust in him at all times. I depend on him for everything. Ella thukku naavara saarthu kolren. Many years ago there was somebody who went to president uh, Roosevelt and asked him we heard that you are an amazing wood chopper how long will it take for you to chop this log of wood they bought a big log of wood and they said how long will it take for you to chop this block of wood in Soniketa and you know what he said it would take me 8 hours he said 8 hours they said 8 hours to chop this wood I didn't get done he said, okay, maybe you can give me five if you want. He said, five hours, they said. Well, 
I can try to do it in three hours, he said. Oh, three hours is okay. So you do it for three hours, three long hours to chop this wood. He said, well, I will use the first two hours to sharpen my axe and the, the last hour to chop off the wood. Blowberry Martha Vetradik Moon Manero, Rendamana Edikana Kathia Titradike, Ormanero, Martha Vetrad, Uli Madeda, ministry is the same. Two hours sharpening my axe with the Lord, putting my dependence on Him, crying out to Him. One hour I go and preach, and you'll be effective. Did you get what I said this morning? Without putting your trust in Him, you can do nothing. Three parts of this verse. Number one, how can I accomplish God's plan? First, I have to know my purpose. Everybody say that. I have to know my purpose. Fix your purpose right. Number two, what should I do? I should walk in close proximity with the Lord. I have to follow Him. Be guided by Him. Stay close to Him. Number three, just put your trust in God. Because He will make you fishers of men.